about beer, educate people about beer, and drink it. Brewing a batch of beer. Over an open flame. This is the way beer would have been made for centuries. Uh, certainly in me medieval times they had copper kettles, uh, they had fire, they had pulleys, they could set up something like this if they wanted to. But what we do is we heat water in the copper kettle, we mix the water with malted barley that's been crushed and put into this uh, vessel that we call our mash lauder tun. And uh, the mash lauder tun is, is as simple as a, as a wooden vessel that has a hole in the bottom. The, the stick that's at an angle right now has a cork at the end. So basically it's the same as a false bottom if you're doing whole grain? The false uh, bottom is either spruce or in this case I use straw. Oh, excellent. Straw doesn't impart much of a flavor to the beer. The device that can separate the grain from the liquid. And as you can see, I'm only getting liquid coming out of the bottom of there right now. That is, that, is, that is the last running of the sweet wort. We'll use that to top off the kettle after we, after we boil and, and remove some of the hops and so forth. With a cork and a hole, you get some grain through the hole. And so I just pour that grain and what little bit of liquid is in there back in at the top, and I minimize the amount of grain that ends up in my boil. Okay, now from this process here, yep. how do you go, where do you add in the yeast and all that good stuff in the end? What we're going to do is we'll boil this for about an hour. We add hops that, that, that will balance the sweetness from the malt uh, with some bitterness and aroma and flavor. We've also added molasses to this beer. We wanted to kick up the alcohol content and add some interesting flavors. And so we added molasses to this beer. Uh, we're making a molasses porter. How do you drink this beer? This beer will probably be a little on the sweet side because my mash temperature was too hot. I stuck my finger in the water and it was hotter than it should have been. But I lose a lot of heat in the mash tun. Okay? So I, I, I compensate for the fact that I'm losing so much heat by adding too much heat. Okay? If I were trying to go, and again, I'm doing this as a demonstration more so than making beer, I will certainly drink this beer, this beer will be good, <laughs> but it probably will be a little too sweet because the mash temperature was too high. Uh, the sparge temperature was too high because it takes so long to make all this happen and, and so on and so forth. It might be too bitter. I don't care. I'll let it no such thing is too bitter. I'll let it sit a little longer if it's too bitter, that's all. So, so from here, from here so we'll cool this. It's actually very cool because what I do is I'll raise the kettle up, I'll put out the fire, I will take the mash tun, which I'll dump the grain out of and put a cork at the bottom. I'll set that where the fire is. Here I'm going to add a couple bags of ice because it's a natural resource here. And they could have had ice back then. And I will add water to it so that water and ice are at the top of the mash tun. I will drop this kettle down into it. I will stir the kettle and I will stir the ice. And in about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, this beer will be ready to go into a fermenter. And what are you using for the fermenter? I've tried using crock. And it's a crock. <laughs> it's a crock. It's a crock. It came out tasting much more like baby diapers than it did <laughs> than it did beer. It was an old crop, so it probably had baby diapers in it for all I know. But the uh, I use plastic fermenters. Plastic no fermenters. Carboy? Well, they're hard to move. You know, what yeah. if I break it on the way home, eh? That's uh, Steve, Steve, Steve is gonna. That's okay. Yeah, go. Steve has a plastic fermenter. Sanitizing. Yep. Five absolutely. Five gallon plastic. Yeah. You cannot. Once I turn the heat off of this, you can't put your finger in it right, anymore. Oh, no. You can taste this all you want. You can pull a hop out of there and eat it if you want to. You can't put it back in. You don't put it back <laughs> in. Well, right now you can. As long as I've got heat on it, it's okay. We're at 180 right now. 180. 180. Yep. Excellent. My, my finger's calibrating Fahrenheit. <laughs> Once it's cooled, then we just and make. You add your I, I use, once you're in. Yep. Well, I use a I use a bucket pump to transfer it from the kettle to my plastic fermenter or to his carboy. I've got a funnel and strainer that we can use to separate the, the chunks. But I use a bucket pump for for doing the transfer, and then uh, we'll add the yeast, and uh, uh, he will either you know choose ale or lager yeast, and I'm going to choose the other. I have some of both. So uh, how do you get your yeast? I get the dry yeast and I... Yeah, but how did they get yeast back in the 60s? Back in the day, they had, ma they had magic sticks. <laughs> magic sticks. They did. 
You know how you know how home brewers are talking about using the, the chair rails that they put into their, their sour barrels and so forth? Uh-huh. Okay. That's how yeast was transferred. They had a stick that they stirred the beer with after when it when it made a sweet beer, okay, that became a magic stick. And so they would stir the next batch of beer with the same stick. So it really and was a magic stick. It really was a magic stick. And it was basically yeast. That it's gets a wild fermentation. Yeah, like yep, yep, yep. back, back in the day, that back in the day, that's all they had was wild fermentation. And it was wood sticks, I'm sure, which oh, saturated gotcha. it into yep. the wood, you creating got yes. the magic yes. 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 That is some excellent knowledge, my friend. What's your name? Mike. Mike Christina. Michael, 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 Michael Brown. Brown. Michael Brown. These beers will be served up at the Ann Arbor Brewers Guild meetings. Uh, Steve and I are both members of the Ann Arbor Brewers Guild. Excellent. And, uh, you know, Steve will probably get his kegged up before I will, but... <laughs> well, can I get some uh, literature and information for me? Uh, yeah. You got anything? I, 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 you got any beers sitting back there? Yes. <laughs> the brewing company makes. It's called Buzzsaw. And it's a... Uh, Two or three. Hey, my cameraman truck. I don't know if that's legal. Okay. The old man? Yeah. Barrel. <laughs> 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 All right. Good. This is a this is a beer that's made at the mm. Harbor Brewing Company. Bill Gerds made this and entered it into the uh, the web the like web competition up in Frankenmuth, and it took best of show. Wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Uh, very he doesn't nice know idea. what he's doing. No less. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind. Too. That is very nice. It's got that grapefruit. It's very grapefruity, very citrusy. It's got a great nose to it. Yes. I can see why it's called a buzz saw, because it gets you buzz and it saws right through your taste buds. There you go. I love a good unbalanced beer. Especially if it's unbalanced with that. You know, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yep, yep. It's a nice thing. This is probably better balanced because this is a beer brewed by a friend of mine that, you know, likes hops, but, but he likes balance also. Nice amber color. Clear. Yeah. I like that. Light nose. Just enough sweetness, but it's not overly sweet. Great malt nose. Balance. It's all about balance. That is a great balance beer. Yep. Cheers. 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 I love a great balanced beer also. <laughs> and you said, I see you, uh, you got your brand doing a little bit of metal action there. I wanted silver metal at the competition. Oh, excellent. For what? It was a beer de guard, which is a French, a French style beer. Well, cheers and congratulations. Well, thank you very much for the information. Well,